See, today we are heavily interested in startups in Indonesia owing to the fertile climate that breeds it and the innovations that it brings. But due to economic conditions, it appears that their future may not seem so certain. Or is it? To find out more, we are now sitting down with Wisnu Setiadi, the uh, CFO of Mandiri Capital Indonesia, to talk about exactly that. Mas Wisnu, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us uh, doing this interview. I imagine you must be quite busy uh, with the work that you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's cut right to the chase. I mean, into the portfolio of your organization. You know, currently, the global economic conditions that we face are sort of uncertain. You know, Google's Economy C2023 report stated that uh, the private funding is at a six year low. Now, in light of these conditions, how do you see the startup industry in Indonesia and what do these, con what do these conditions mean to, you, to the companies in your portfolio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very good questions. Thank you. Well, as we understand, um, the, 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 the landscape for investments, especially from two uh, important indicators, the amount of raise and, and the funding rounds, Two normally indicators that we pay attention closely has uh, fell dramatically for especially for 2023 mm -hmm. when compared with 2022 or 2021 like uh, that happens in Southeast Asia and no different with Indonesia like we saw a sharp decline of 70% decline year on year basis in 2022 in, in terms of the amount of race the amount of capital raised by the startups and around 50% decline in terms of the funding rounds decline uh, in year-on-year -year basis. Right. So what are we seeing here? That probably VCs and PEs alike, we are holding back from investing aggressively in startups. And we pay more attention and heavier attention basically on portfolio management and nurturing our existing portfolios. And uh, MCI, uh, it's no different. We are uh, underlining the importance of having, for our startups, for our portfolios, having a clear corporate strategy on how to improve the financial performance and the business fundamentals. I mean, the processes like previously, for I don't know, since 2020, 2021, probably we can see startups burning money really fast to boost its revenue. We cannot do that any longer now. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, we have to pay attention on the Joe's ratio. Joe's is uh, the, the, the differences between the growth of revenue and the growth of the costs incorporated to produce that revenue. Right. So if the cost burning is heavier than the revenue, then it's not a, a healthy performance. Mm -hmm. Now, we are crafting a strategy to communicate, not just to communicate, but to educate or even to to help our startups sharp their strategy on how to become much leaner on, on how they manage their OPEX, right. operational expenditures, and at the same time, maintaining a healthy, sustainable revenue growth okay. without burning too much OPEX or cash. Now, this is the, 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 the emphasize that we are trying to give our portfolio at the moment. I um, mean, uh, regarding our investment policy, um, we are not re really holding back. We are just crafting a more, what do you call that, a more uh, rigorous approach on how to balance the investment due diligence with the risk part that previously probably it was 50-50 or even 70-30, more heavier balance on the investment promises, you know, the, the, right. the business growth and the uh, the market is very supportive of the startup environment and we we we, we try to uh, improve the balance uh, with the risk management considerations here. it's interesting that you mentioned risk management a little bit because mm -hmm. um, I've noticed in, in you've mentioned in the in the previous in your previous event that you hosted last week mm -hmm. that you're targeting investments for AI startups now that's yeah. a little bit of a risky investment I can imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. but despite that that must mean that you must have some confidence in them. So which companies have you set your sights on within this industry? And what potential do you see in the future of the industry in general? Yeah, artificial intelligence itself is uh, promising to begin with. Uh, some studies uh, says that um, 
in the next seven to eight years, it was projected to have a compound annual growth rate of almost 20%. And by the end of the decade, we, we might see an industry with a volume of close to four billion US dollars. I mean, like some studies like that is show us a very promising number. And we must look uh, closely to, to that potential. We, we cannot allow ourselves to be left behind if right. there's a potential uh, startups in AI sectors that can possibly grow into something fantastic in the future. But again, um, to invest in such a, like you said earlier, riskier sectors like this, we must consider, I mean like we are part of a bigger Mandiri ecosystem and a bigger state-owned enterprise ecosystem. We must pay attention on the potential, what this AI startup can collaborate with the ecosystem. Right. Like in banks, probably if you ask me, is there any particular type of AI that you're looking for in a market? Generative AI is one probably. Because they can help us not to replace, again not to replace, but empower our ability to to communicate, to interact with our customers in a more standardized manner. Right. Can you imagine a, a bank with the size of Mandiri or even Bank Rakyat? Yeah. They have a, maybe hundreds of calls in a minute to minute basis. These are being handled by the AI, a more consistent and reliable uh, first layer interactions with the customers. That, that is specifically what we are looking for. But again, back to the answer of the previous, the previous questions. We must see the fundamentals of the startups. Of course. Well, if they can provide a very distinctive uh, service and value that can be potentially collaborated with uh, the ecosystem, then probably they can possibly have a healthier financial fundamentals as well. Yeah, and you know that's not all that uh, mm. that our world is currently facing. You know, digital uh, advancements, uh, particularly in AI, but. We are also currently facing like a climate crisis, you know. So, is this taken into account during uh, for the next trends of private funding, such as money to capital? You know, do you see investment potential in sectors such as green energy, or perhaps startups with uh, circular economy models with, uh, embedded into their business model? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a growing concern recently, especially um, as a state-owned enterprise. We have uh, certain directions from the government to, okay. to focus on. Uh, not in, not only investing, but to to implement a more uh, climate friendly or environmentally friendly uh, business operations and processes. If there's a startup that potentially can help us monitor the, the carbon being produced by these operations on a day-to-day -day basis and pinpoint uh, several delicate points for us, uh, for the management of the bank, to be able to reduce or make the carbon produ uh, productions more efficiently that could be uh, our primary target basically uh, i mean like the, the startup that can help us uh, measure and monitor these carbons but apart from that recently we have embarked um, uh, cooperations with a uh, with a limited partner from australia in festival we have launched a climate tech fund okay. uh, this climate tech funds basically uh, we are looking for uh, what do you call it, accelerating uh, the technology being promoted by this startup across the regions, not just Indonesia specifically, specifically, but also Southeast Asia, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam probably, and Australia as well. And probably if, if Australia have already a more advanced technology regarding the, the environmentally friendly startups and how to control climate, climate and an environment, probably we are still lagging behind. Yeah. So, that transfer of tech that we are looking for, uh, the cooperation with uh, uh, the potential investment portfolio with, uh, with, within this climate tech funds in the future, I hope. And I can imagine that part is to you know, catch up, but uh, from, what we, from what you're saying, it mm -hmm. sounds like there is quite a lot of potential with mm -hmm. regards to investments in the future. But yep. I mean, unfortunately, at, as it stands, the market isn't exactly certain. I mean, for mm -hmm. one, the Fed rate is at its highest uh, in 22 yeah. years, and mm. the Bank Indonesia seven-day reverse repo rate is now at six percent as well, well the yep. highest it's been in a few years too. Yep. And you know, with the in current interest rate climate, VCs and PEs have been holding back investments for startups. 
So do you feel pessimistic about the market outlook and has your firm, I think you actually mentioned this before as well, your firm has been holding back as well, hasn't it? Yep, yep, yep. Quite agree. We paid we pay attention closely on this macroeconomic, so-called macroeconomic indicators regarding our overall economic condition. So, um, interest rate climate hike is one thing, but uh, we must also uh, closely look at our uh, domestic uh, macroeconomic indicators and we should adjust, that's, that's the conclusion, we should adjust on how we do investments. We cannot, uh, we cannot use our uh, old ways of just investing, like I said, earlier when I was answering your previous questions, I guess. Previously, probably the weightage of considering an investment is heavier on the market premises. Right. Like there's a significant growth and everybody's using a digital uh, approach on their day-to-day -day activities. We are increasing the risk factors to be balanced with, uh, with the market premises. Mm -hmm. Now this is getting, uh, putting us in a more a careful manner, like I said uh, earlier, it's investing but carefully. Mm -hmm. um, there's two types actually to improve the, this risk uh, management consideration. First, sure. we should have a portfolio discipline on how to invest. Portfolio mix and portfolio guidelines will prevent us from over investing into a particular sectors. So we pay attention on the balance of our portfolio. We have invested too much and there's too many of us. We should exit some. And we should uh, divest, uh, we should invest more in, not related with fintech, for example, right. to reduce the exposure in our portfolio. That's one. And the second thing, I think this is the more important one, that we have several regulations uh, provided by our government. Actually, it was there, you can download it uh, yeah. uh, from POJK or SOJK. We can incorporate these uh, considerations to our risk framework. To reduce your exposure to risk, right? Yeah. yeah. And, probably creating a risk scoring mechanism. This sounds my, uh, might look like banks already, but I think it's necessary. It's a necessary decisions that we need to, to make to balancing out uh, the investment decisions. Okay, yeah. that's very interesting. Um, yeah. Masmusina, thank you so much for your time in yeah, this, during sure. this interview. It was a very interesting conversation. Looking forward for more. For sure. And that was our conversation with Wismu Sutiyadi, the CFO of Mandiri Capital Indonesia, about the current market outlook, particularly for startups in Indonesia. Very interesting conversation indeed. Thank you, Wismu. Thank you so much.